tide is almost fully out. We've got quite big tides right now, although they are on their way down. And Arwe and I have come down here to find something. Something that we can eat. If you look down here, you may see some. There's one here. It's a green lip mussel. That's not a very big one. They get bigger than that. That's enough to feed you, Solar, and Kazi tomorrow. What about you? That for you. <laughs> Needs to take a home. Yeah. Did the kids enjoy the last ones I gave you? Mm hmm. Fresh mussels. Yeah, I didn't wash it last time. So, what you can do is you can put them in some water with some oats, and the mussels like the oats, that will help purge them. Or you can just scrub the outside before they open up, like get all that there off so you don't get the sand in, mm. just take that off, you can rub them against each other, mm. and then when they open you don't get the sand in, it's good to give them a quick clean. Yeah, so and after cook can I wash? Yeah, but better talk, you can wash again after you cook, so there's a little bead here on the muscle, see that little bead? Mm -hmm. So when they open up you can pull that off, it's got to be tongue on, it might come off with it, but it's not much. Mm. Um, you pull that out, you might get a little crab too, that's alright. So you can cook it up and then pull that bed off, each one, and then wash it. And then you can mix it with your sauce. You might do just half a mussel, so keep half in the shell. So mm -hmm. half in the shell. And then you do your sauce and then you put the shell side over. So there's shells on the top. Put it in your pan like that. Shell on the top. And then the sauce will cook underneath the mussel and you can turn it over and eat it with the sauce and it'll be delicious. Okay. Mm. Could be pretty good, eh? Easy. Ten minutes. Mm. I do it all the time on low tide. Yeah. No one come here. No well, one probably will after this video. <laughs> Most estuaries in New Zealand have flounder, and quite a few also have cockles. There's flounder out there. Any time of the year you can get them. This time of the year is not a good time to net because there's stingrays out there, and you end up getting big stingrays in your net. So go spearing them. And at the very low tide, collect a few mussels and just take enough for a feed. Never take more than you need. That's just enough for Awi. I had some yesterday to eat, so I'm not collecting any now. When I want some, I'll go and get some. B, you've destroyed your beard, boy. Oh, mate. Look what he's done, Pace. Stop wagging your tail, Pace. It's not funny. Hey, look at this. Sit down, Pace. He's absolutely pulled it to bits. Do you get bored in there? You've been sleeping in there for the last couple of weeks. And this morning you decided, nah, you had enough, eh? And you buggered it. Yep. Well, what are we going to do? Try and stuff it back in or give you no bedding? See, this is a classic example where a dog does something that a human's not happy with. And the dog has absolutely zero idea it's done anything wrong. I mean, it might have done it 20 minutes ago. Even if it had done it a minute ago, it wouldn't remember that it's done something wrong. And people will come and tell their dog off. And the dog will then act guilty because it can hear the master going, B, what have you done, naughty dog? See, even Pace is getting upset. But it's only getting upset at the master's voice, not at the act that's done, because it can't work it out. Dogs have a very tiny memory spell with remembering things they've done wrong. That's why if you stop proofing an animal like a pig dog, you've got to actually do it on its intention before it's about to jump on the sheep. In the case of B destroying his bed, he's got no idea what I'm talking about. 
is going on my tones, and he can understand the emotion of my tones, but he doesn't really get what it's connected with, do you, mate? That's right. And you have buggered that beard. Well, what are you going to do, eh? He's got terrier in him. And Pace will probably do the same. Should we go and see if Poe's got pups? Actually, we'll put you in the outside cage before we do that because we want to give her space. Okay, come on, put you outside first, Pace. Pace, come. Come on. Come on. Where you go? No, don't wait for me. Just go, go and do a toilet or something. Go on, where you go? <laughs> What's the. Go on, there you go. All right, mate. All right. You got bored in there. I understand that. You got a high prey drive, I'll paste it back in. Pick up. Pick up. That's all. He doesn't take too much encouragement. Hey Bruno, how you going? G'day mate. G'day. That's dried possum mate. And that is for you, ducky. <laughs> you want those dog biscuits, there's none left. Eat that, try and share it with chickens, eh? Yep. Some more? Yeah, daddy. Okay, Mr. Fussy, here's your dry possum meat. There you go. Eat it. Come on, tear into it. You love it. Should we play a game with it? Make you eat it more? Good boy, what you got? Hey, what you got? What you got? Now it's fun, isn't it, eh? Terry's like to shake the shit out of stuff. You might say, well, that's trading him to eat a possum, but no, he won't touch a live possum. <coughs> yes, you want some too, don't you, boy, eh? Oh, okay, we'll give it to you. We'll give that to you because you just uh, love your possum. And we'll give uh, B this morning some posse yum. We've got plenty of it, we're stocked up well. Got rolls of it. Yeah. The best dog food on the planet, in my opinion, as far as getting your dogs in good condition. If you can't get fresh possum, this is the next best thing. You can probably tell by the coat of Poe how good condition she was in. We'll cut some up for B this morning. B's hanging around Poe's kennel. B, come. Good boy. Got posse yum for you. Be up. Good boy. That one's for Bruno. It's for you, Bruno. All chopped up already. Where you go, Bruno? Eat up, mate. It's okay. Eat up there, mate. That's what you were waiting for, wasn't it, eh? Ah, you got me finger again. Jeez. Duck. Hey, that's not for you. That's for me, mate. Now this time, easy on the finger. Ooh. Yeah, you'd like to, but nah, this is for Poe. Bring you go, mate. He just loves that. He actually enjoys this more than the actual possum. There she goes. I can hear her babies. She's coming out, hey? Did you want to come out, eh? You're hungry, aren't you, eh? You are. Look what I've got for you, hey? Want some tuck a few. Hold on, Poe. Wait for it. She's hungry, man. And a chance to put in here. Here we go. He's really hungry. Eat that pie. Eat it slowly, mate. Just go slow. This is where she's got cancer, see the lump in that? It's a shame man, it's a hard lump. Haven't had a vet take a biopsy but it's got all the signs of breast cancer. I know they can get mastitis but it's a really hard rudge. Not good. Not much noise coming out of your puppies, I must be all asleep. I'll just spread it out a little bit because she's eating a bit too fast. Spread it around. So she's my best pig dog I've ever had, Poe. She was sold to me by a very good friend at a very good price, Kim Swan. Um, 
much cheaper than what she was really worth. Mate rates. I got her at a year old and she was already catching. And then she got nailed by a good boar and got ripped up badly and for 18 months she just wouldn't hunt properly. But I stuck with her and now she's the opposite. Now she really likes to catch big boars. And you've eaten that too fast, haven't you, Poe? Eh? Take it, Poe. Poe, come. I think, come on, we won't take you out of the kennel, late. Eh? You've been stuck in here all day. Come on, you might need to go to toilet. Poe, come. Come on. Hey, too fast there. See you go for a toilet, eh? Good girl. Good dog. Here you go, toilet. Wagging the tail. Happy. Dogs are so tough, man. You know, she's given birth like to 11 pups now is the count. And she's going for a toilet. Good girl. That'd be a weight off you. Hey, you've been holding that for a while. Nice to be outside again, eh, Poe? Hey? Good girl. Good to be outside again, eh? Good girl. Mate, hey, did a good job, didn't you, eh? Hey, made us lots of puppies. Want to stay by me all the time? Let's go for a walk. Come on, go for a walk. I want to see you stretch your legs a bit. You want to hang around? Hey, oh, you're a good girl, aren't you, eh? Such a good girl. Yeah, so uh, Poe's journey with us as a pig dog has been amazing. She got absolutely nailed when she was, yeah, when she was about two years of age. She's got so many holes in it. Let's clean that gunk out of your eyes. And then she um, came right and went the opposite direction where she just wanted to kill every boar in sight. And she started leaving the smaller pigs. And I'm a hunter that likes to hunt for meat. I don't really care about big jaws and big boars anymore. I used to when I was younger, but these days it's about feeding people. So I like getting the smaller pigs, but not the real small ones, but anything sort of over 50 she'll nail. And if there's nothing else around, she'll nail a small pig too, but she always goes for the biggest. And we've got videos showing her doing that in my hunt catalogue. Her breed is Hunterway, which is a New Zealand working dog. You can see the coloration brown around here and on a pause here. Uh, I believe a bit of beardy from this bit of um, literal beard she's got. She's got this little fluffy chest like this too. Yeah, I'd say she's got heading dog in her. And she's about seven years old. And if she has got cancer, uh, she may not be here for that much longer. We don't know yet uh, to the extent of what sort of cancer it is. We need to do a biopsy. But it looks like she has breast cancer. There's been a lump that's been growing quite rapidly in the last four weeks. But right now she's got pups to feed, so that can hold off till we get looked at. Good girl. Have a drink. Yeah, she's wanting to get back to her pups. She's on a mission. It's okay mate, I've only locked you out to lock all the other dogs out to keep them safe, okay? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Right there, just wait. They're okay. Sit down, sit down Poe, sit down. Sit down. Stay here. I want to go in first and just check. Stay. Stay here. Stay here. Very strong urge. I just want to check in first myself. Stay here. Okay. Everyone's moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They're all there and they're all okay. Okay, we're gonna take them out a bit later on and change the bedding in here. It's been two days and it's a bit messy. 
some really nice looking <laughs> puppies. I like the coloration of this one here. It's quite a big one. But we'll let Poe go in. Here you go, Poe. Here you go. Come on, mate. Okay, go in there now. Very carefully sit down. There she goes. How they managed to not squash them, I don't know. Got the sweet one here, look. It's got black hair and brown. It could be Pace's puppy or it could be Brown's puppy, I don't know. It's okay, mate. Pose just checking out her pups, having a clean up, sitting herself down. There she goes. This little puppy is a, a neat colour, eh? It's okay, mate, it's okay. It's okay. You are a bitch, are you? I know, you're a little boy. Umbilical cord, it's already come off. There we go. I want to get them used to humans handling them very, very early in the piece. Hopefully, Awe comes around today with her kids and they have a wee play with them just to get them used to being handled by humans. Right, put me back with your mum. Here we go. There's an old uh, spring off a door of a car, a hatchback. A few of you guys have been telling me that this knife that I was gifted is a steak knife, and local knife maker Ross here beside me, who's at the house, has just been telling me about why it's fluted. Oh, I didn't know what it was for, but actually, Ross is just saying it's when you cut through the flesh, it doesn't stick. Cheese sticks on there. Just like cheese sticks to a knife, and he said you can also cut cheese with that too, which is true. And I have been cutting cheese with that actually, it's been bloody good. Yeah. So, a little bit of information. Ross has been making knives for years out of recycled stuff. I've got some of his knives. He's taught me to make a couple of knives, and I've still got uh, the one I made a file. I gifted the very good one that I made to the palm, and that's from Vasa. So, thanks, bud. Bloody good knife. And you're right, you could actually stick a pig with it, it's got actually a drop, drop tip, so you yeah. can actually gut an animal with it. Oh, yeah. You can use it for a lot of stuff in the bush. If you, don't, if you can't stick it, cut its throat. Just dumb. Jeez, you're a boy. Knife that big, wouldn't you? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut a pig's throat, though, because then you've got a big open sort of amount yeah. of meat in the bush. Better just to oh, you know, yeah. side stick it. But it's a bloody good knife. Yeah, big, very good knife. Actually, you can get a sheath for that and carry that in the bush. Be bloody handy. Brittle, too, careful. Is it brittle? Wool we'll weaving at that, though. Mate, we're cutting, not for. Ah, uh, right. Okay, yeah. 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 Like Good point. It, it's tough, but you know, you can pry it and it'll snap off at the handle. Oh, yeah. the Don't want that. No. Young fella snapped his stick knife in the bush the other day, young Jody. Yeah. That was a, oh, one of those bloody cheap ones, which brand was. I better not say it because if I get it wrong, I'll get roasted, but yeah. it was just a cheap brand, yeah. Anyway, there you go, that's the steak knife. I've decided I'm going to bring the puppies inside here, and uh, I've made it a bit more sort of soft so they can't. Get squashed so easy. I don't have a crash bar in there, but for the next two weeks, that's where they'll be. So we're going to put them in this little basket and transport them right now. And you, Bruno, you'll get your old house back, mate. That's right. That's where Poe is now. You'll get it back. Let's see how she's doing inside here. Very hot today. She's panting quite a bit. We'll put this little basket in here. And transport 11 puppies. Hey, how are we doing here, Pope? All your little babies right there. G'day, mate. You okay, hey? Good girl. They're drinking right now, are they? Well, they sure are. Let's take the ones that are not first, eh? Just put them together. Little black one. Here we go, pal. And a little black one, just so you got your mate beside you. So you're all calm. That's a bigger dog, isn't it, eh? It's three. Panting a lot. It's four. There goes my favourite one so far. Not a big one. Sorry to tear off the milk, mate. That's six. 
Est-ce que Kyo Good kill. There's your baby's there, mate. Good kill. Good kill. Good dog. That's a good dog. A drink? Pretty hot, eh? Have a drink. Good kill. Oh, there's the last one. I'll leave you, mate. There we go. I did count them right. That's 11. Just do an idiot check and make sure we haven't left anybody behind. Go toilet, Poe. Go toilet. Go toilet. Good girl. She's been trained to go on toilet for long trips when we're hunting. But it's also good for times like now when I'm going to put her inside for a while. She had to go anyway, but we'll just speed her up. These guys in here. Going to pop them inside the house. Come on, Poe. Good girl. She's not fretting too much. She's pretty good with me taking them away from her. Pretty hot, isn't it, eh? Come on, let's put your babies inside. And into our new house. This is going to be a bit more comfortable for everybody, I reckon. And cleaner. There they go. Now who's bleeding here? This guy's got a bleeding foot, it looks like. That's where the blood's coming. What's going on here? This guy here's got a bleeding foot. Okay, keep an eye on that. I'm gonna put that in there. There's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Oh, oh, gentle there, Poe. That wasn't good, mate. We'll see how this goes. Seven. Eight. Clean that bum, please. It's got poo on it. Here, Po. Clean it up. There you go. You got poo on your nose now. That's what they naturally do. There you go, mate. It's really important that uh, the mother stimulates them to go toilet. That's why they need a mum. If you don't have a mum, they've got to get a wet flannel on their bum and wipe it and simulate it. One of the puppies has hurt its foot. I don't know what, maybe there's something sharp in the kennel. I don't know if it's a wee bit of blood, but it's not too bad. We'll see how that works out, and if it's okay, we'll keep it. If it's not, then uh, we'll change it. They'll be here for two weeks at least. Okay, Poe, good girl. Good dog. Today, when Arby comes over, later on, we'll take them all out, and we'll just uh, write down what sex they are. We may weigh them as well. Just keeping on their weight. You stay outside, Bruno. That is deer kidney. I was going to eat it myself, but I think we're going to give it to Poe. Hey, Poe. Papa. Yeah, mate. Good girl. That went down pretty fast. Good girl. Good dog, Bruno. That's a good boy. And that is my meal today. Two undercuts from fellow deer. That was in our last hunt. And uh, Patrick shot that animal. Full hunt. Actually, it won't be the full hunt because my SD card lost some stuff on it. Most of the hunt will be there on Patreon, but we did lose a bit of that. Anyway, we'll do the best with what we've got. That's going to be dinner right now. That is leaf lard from Wild Pig. And what I've got in the pan is I've got leaf lard mixed with duck fat, mixed with bacon fat and a little bit of butter and some seasoning that's left over from the last bit of meat I cooked yesterday. And it's okay to reuse it. It's got good flavour. I'm really loving this seasoning from Canada, from Gregory Tepley. It's got garlic and pepper and salt, smoked stuff in there. It's really a, a nice one. And uh, I'm not going to be shy on it, I'm going to put plenty on, I'm going to put plenty on there too and dab it in that on the board and get it all over it because it's really good. Now the thing with your steak, when you've got a, a back strap, or in the case of this one here, an undercut, don't chop it up in little bits and put it in the pan, you just bugger it up. I see guys do that and I 
You can cut your medallions, but then you're doing a different type of cooking altogether. You generate some black pan, you're doing it very quick. We have enough seasoning there, guys, or we want more? I think we want a bit more. We want some around here as well. We want to really get it nice. I don't really like using chili with venison because it takes away the actual venison taste, which I like. In the case of this, it's fallow deer. And fallow is a delicious meat, it just really is. You can see it's quite dry. I've aged this in the fridge, didn't need to, but I've aged it for five days. And being venison, it'll be fine. And we are ready to pop it in the pan, hot. Laying away from myself. There we go. Oh, I can smell something plastic burning. Dumb boy. Jeez, Clay. The brains and balls, you'd be a bloody unit. That was dumb. Ah, the fresh smell of seasoned venison with bloody plastic burning. Well, it's not mixed together, so it won't bugger it up. It's just around there. Okay, turn that. And once we've got the whole outside really hot, we'll keep on turning it. And what you can do, if you've got an oven, is you can sear it and then put it into your oven. That's another way to cook it. Sear it in the pan and straight in the oven. I don't have an oven, I have a camp oven, but I'll be cooking the pan. Okay. This happened was cooking, and I want to see what Pose can do about it. She's going to leave that, see if she's going to pick it up. Because I was thinking I could leave her, but if not, I'll have to put a rail around the outside. What's she going to do there? I'll just leave that and see what goes on. Come back to that. She's seen it. Okay, she's going to fix that up, isn't she? There we go. Soft mouth and back in there. Good girl pose. Right. Well, I learnt something there. Those little puppies will wander, so I need to make sure that uh, it's closed up if she's away, because they can uh, fall out. How often do you turn your steak? As soon as you see the blood start to come out, you turn it, which is about every 10 to 15 seconds. Just walking it past the fry pan, as my daughter says. And just test it all bit, and I'm going to use a sashimi knife. How's it looking? I would say that is done. Yes, good for a salad. Just going to let those stand for about oh, five minutes. Mmm, looks pretty good, but it smells even better than it looks. The pan's turned off, but there's enough heat in it just to do those cherry tomatoes I've cut in half. Seasonal salad, and putting my tomatoes straight out of the pan and on top of it, with all the fat and the heat, doesn't matter. It goes really well. It tastes nice. It's going to be delicious. Poe looks like she's ready for a bit of a rest, eh, mate? Check these out. Look at the colour. Look at the colour on those. Beautiful radishes. Absolutely delicious. My favourite vegetable would be radish, I think. As a kid, I used to get for my birthday radish seeds to plant my own radishes. And I'd sit down with a plate when they were growing and a bit of salt and I'd dip them in and eat a whole bowl like that. Or a bunch like that in one sitting. Easy. Mm-mm. Radishes. I've just started to heat this up again because I think we're going to cook some mushrooms with this. Right, we don't want to overcook these, we just want to sort of put them in the fat there and let them do their thing, but not too much. And you know, with all food, if you really want to get the best of it, as far as nutrition goes, don't overcook. Nothing wrong with eating a lot of vegetables raw. Some things need to be blanched, like uh, broccoli for instance, a good uh, thing is to blanch it because you'll stop the um, some of the enzymes giving you a gut ache. Also with kale, it wants to be blanched too generally. So I'm going to give those a bit, of, oh, a bit of fat and a bit of time in the pan to do its magic. 
and then turn them over. How's that puppy's doing? There you going, Poe? Okay. Hey, sit down, girl. Good girl. That's okay. It's all right, mate. They're all over the place, aren't they? I'm going to feed you again soon. The amount of milk they're sucking out of you, we need to keep the tucker up, don't we, eh? Dressing's going to be two limes, one lemon, some apple cider vinegar, and this local olive oil. It's a real nice one, that. She looks buggered. Rightio. In to the salad. Done. For colour and taste, capsicum. Capsicum. Bit of a tongue twister. Or bell peppers if you're in the States. They're nice raw and also nice lightly fried. Back to our dressing. Just going to add a little bit of apple cider vinegar. We don't need much. And where's our olive oil? This is going to be quite a bit. Quite a bit. It's good healthy stuff. Round it and round we go. Probably the most healthiest part of this whole salad, truth be known, is the olive oil. And you can go over that now. Add our capsicums and toss it. Before we start tossing though, we need to add the main star of the attraction. And as you can see, it's uh, been sitting there for probably five, ten minutes and a bit of blood's come out but it's really cutting. And I'm cutting with this beautiful fluted steak knife that Vasa gave me. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. It actually keeps on cooking after you've taken out of the pan. And to be honest with you, I would have liked this to be a bit rarer than it was. And when I took the other one out, it was actually okay. This one's keep on cooking while it's been out of the pan. That's what it does. Still absolutely delicious. Oh man, that looks good. Yeah, I like it a bit rarer than that, but hey, I'm not complaining. Just shows you how much it does keep on cooking. Looks pretty good. I think we can safely say that that'll be delicious. Nice pink. Let's see what the other one's like. While that's doing that, I'll taste test it. Oh, mate. How's this one looking? Mmm. Oh. That seasoning is just to die for. It really is. Thank you, Gregory Tepley. Absolutely delicious seasoning from Canada. This looks great, doesn't it? Mmm. Hell yeah. Mm -mm. Venison. Right, we're going to add our venison to our salad. And we can start to toss it. And with my phone strategically placed on top of the toaster, I begin to toss. To show you my tossing skills, and I'm not much good at many things at all, but I've always been quite a good tosser, apparently. Or as I keep hearing from people. So I appreciate your comments on that, and uh, I take great pride in being a good tosser. Toss away, Clay. Toss away, mate. That looks divine. I think I'm going to smack some salt in there. Being on the old keto diet, we want lots of salt, so I'm going to smack some pink Himalayan right over that. And uh, there's plenty of steak with salt all over it too, so that should give us enough salt for our daily intake. If you're on a keto diet, you want to have about a teaspoon a day. Helps all the electrolytes do their thing and everything work properly. If you're not on a keto diet, then don't. How does it taste? Let's get some vegetables in there too, boy. I can tell you how it tastes because I've already been into it. I had a wee sneaky taste test while I was cooking. As good as anything you'll get in any fancy restaurant, I promise you that. Mm-mm. What's that, Harold? You want some? Nah, mate, you're a vegetarian. You miss out on this. This is strictly for me. 
Hmm. Well, that's today's snap vlog. Arby's on our way over here to look at the puppies. I'm gonna spend some time with her. Gonna put the phone down. Hope you enjoyed it. Be good. Good luck with your own adventures. Animals, children, hunting, fishing, cooking, life. Be good. Really try and be good. But if you can't be good, then be careful. Yeah. See you later. This one looks like Poe. It's a boy. He's going to be good. Poe's not sure. Hey, where's the girl Poe? Can you find her in the solar? There's one that looks just like coloration of Poe, but it's a girl. She's going to be a hot favourite. Mm -hmm. No, it's... Oh, yes, that's it. That's another one similar. Poe's been really good. Guzzy bro, he's got like two asleep. Gone down to sleep yet. It's really good they're getting these touching with you guys, you know, it's so important for them to get this humanization. Really important that dogs get lots of handy at this age, right up to the first 10 weeks. Oh, she's cool. You're going to be a hot favourite, aren't you? Look at her. Same coloration. Goodbye.